Hi, uh, this is um, going to be a, just a brief video to give you kind of a tutorial introduction to CFSM. Um, probably do more like this in class as well, but I wanted to have one posted so you could have something to uh, refer to as well. So I'm just going to fire up CFSM. I'm already in the directory where it's at. Um, and just give you a brief introduction to what the program's uh, trying to do. Um, you've used the program uh, some already, um, but I'll just tell you a little bit more about it. So the program starts out with a default cross-section sort of already up and running so that you can do anything that you might want to do. Um, and the basic uh, function of the program follows this one, two, three structure, input, analysis, and output. Um, and you'll see um, the various portions of the input available to you here. Um, and then analysis is essentially just one type and then the output um, either the post processor or the section properties and these same things are played out here in the buttons um, one two and three which mostly uh, will be what I use there's some other tools um, which you've had a chance to play a little bit with um, as well so the basic uh, cross-section entry is the material property which is given a number you can see here steel properties being used the nodes um, which are in terms of coordinates um, the elements etc um, so the primary uh, reason to use this tool um, is we can uh, interrogate this cross-section for all of its possible elastic buckling modes um, and we know if it's a long cross-section and it remains rigid we'll get the flexural torsional and torsional or flexural modes that we've worked on uh, in class so far um, and um, if it's a, a short sort of plate type of situation uh, we'll see some of the plate buckling like we worked on uh, in class um, actually just earlier this week so um, I just now want to sort of give you a brief sort of way to sort of use the program type of uh, thing. So the, for a given cross-section like this, um, the thing you're probably often going to want to play with is the uh, applied load. Um, and so you can see here under plot options, if I click on the stress distribution, that the applied load in this case is a bending moment, um, compression on top, tension uh, on the bottom. Um, and you might want other loads. So um, one of the major um, tools that we tend to use um, is this little preprocessor. You can see it under input, um, applied stress generator, um, or under this little button here with the loads. So I'm going to click on uh, that button. And what you'll see is there's a little calculator over here, um, which is set a yield stress for this material. And then there's these buttons. And if I choose, say, the PY button, um, it now puts an axial load on this member so that it is at a compression stress of 50 everywhere. So it's just a way to get an applied load on the cross section that you can then take a look at the stability under that applied load. Because the stability under pure compression right, is going to be different than, say, the stability um, under uh, bending moment about the major axis. Um, each one of those are going to have different buckling loads. So let's say we're interested in um, the stability under applied um, compression. So I click the PY and over here there's a force. You can put any P or moment that you wanted to do here. And then I'll submit this stress back to the input file. And you'll see the only thing that's changed now is this last column of numbers is all 50, 50, 50, which is 50 KSI stress. And you can see it comes back with that particular stress. So the next major thing we need to do before we analyze um, a cross section is actually um, decide what the end boundary conditions are. Um, so uh, that is this portion right here. Um, and um, for the initial analyses, um, we're going to always assume that from one end of the member to the other that we're just going to use a single half sine wave like you see here. So um, with this approach, um, which is called the signature curve approach, we actually physically vary the length um, of the model. Um, so this yellow line is like the length of a column. Um, and we vary that length from one inch all the way out to a thousand inches in this case. Uh, and then we take a look at what happens um, to the buckling um, force um, uh, at all of those different lengths. And so um, uh, Basically, the default that we have here simply supported on the ends, the signature curve type analysis, which is what we're interested in, and these lengths work fine for us for right now. Um, so we can go ahead and do the elastic buckling analysis. And now we're going to be interrogating the output of this analysis. So this is our curve um, of different lengths of the model. 
that we actually looked at. Um, and um, you'll see there's minimums in this curves which are of particular interest. And then these are the buckling shapes that are coming out of these models. So um, let's go look at this first minimum here um, at seven. And the way we do that is we can, we can enter in uh, the number uh, and then click off um, or we can use the arrows back and forth. And then let's hit plot shape. All right, so this is the, a 2D version of the buckling mode um, at this uh, short length. And so um, we can make a, a 3D uh, version of that if we're patient. Um, and it'll look somewhat simple, but um, maybe help you visualize it at least just this first time. <clears throat> so we have to be a little bit patient. So this makes a very simplified uh, version of this. But what you can see is um, the web is buckling and that's what you see here and the flange is buckling a little bit as well and they're all buckling just as plates right so the juncture of the plates isn't really moving each little individual plate is just buckling clearly there's some rotational uh, rigidity being passed from one plate to the other but but that's the basic um, uh, thing that we're seeing um, and if we go to 40 here and I'm going to turn off the 3D so we simplify things a little bit and we plot the shape we'll see well this is similar there's some kind of local plate buckling going on here but these are doing something different um, this mode of buckling is known as distortional buckling and it's a combination of flexural torsional buckling of a flange and local buckling of uh, the web so it's an unusual one um, and if we go out here to let's say um, this is 100, 200, let's go out to 300 What do we see here? Um, torsional, primarily torsional, and some small flexural, so a flexural torsional um, buckling mode. So out at long lengths, um, we have all of the member buckling modes. Um, at intermediate lengths, we have this distortional. At short lengths, we have local plate buckling. Um, and short lengths, um, we should think about the way we did this analysis. Um, this is uh, repeating itself at seven inches. If we go back to the seven inch buckling mode. Um, so this mode of buckling um, could in a longer member repeat itself every seven inches. So at seven and then you'd have the same value at 14, at 21, at 28, etc. So you can see this buckling mode is always down here. Um, it can because we only looked at a single half sine wave or as we talked about it in class the M equals one um, case. Um, so we could look at uh, more complicated cases but uh, we're not uh, trying to do that really right now. So, um, so just to give you a, a few more um, sort of kind of feature type things that you can do so that you can investigate these things. So um, if I go back to the input page. Sometimes it's nice, our output in that last case was all um, a function of uh, force. We had applied the squash load um, as a reference. Sometimes that's useful. Sometimes you'd rather do just a stress so we could turn all these back to one KSI, uh, in which case the results will be the same, but now they're normalized to a different input. And so if I run the analysis, you're going to see the buckling curve is going to look identical because that in fact it's nothing's changed at all except a, a linear multiplier. Um, but now I have these values and this is actually the stress so for a column in particular this is easy to use this is the stress at which this buckles so at 18 KSI we have elastic local buckling at 28 KSI we have um, this distortional buckling and so this can also be useful sometimes you want to work in in stress um, or in um, in force. Um, so, so imagine um, to just sort of emphasize that this is the local plate buckling, I could actually pin these two locations and remove uh, the rest of this uh, material here and we could run another analysis. So we remember this is at 17.7 KSI and we'll see what would happen if we were to run a simpler model. So to do that, um, I need to delete a bunch of elements um, and members um, have kind of a, I can sort of sort of brute force it. So I need to get rid of nodes one, two, and three, and nodes eight, nine, and ten. So I really just kind of come in here and brute force that. And I need to get rid of elements one, two, and three, uh, and all of the elements that include nodes eight, nine, and ten. And then I click off, and it sort of cleans it up, and I end up with just 
uh, the web left, um, but right now this end and this end is actually free along the length. So I need to go to node 1 and to node um, uh, uh, 4 there and pin that. So I turn off the ability for it to translate in the X or Z direction at node 1 and 4. Um, still got my 1 KSI load, so this is fine. I can actually take this one now, I can analyze it. And we see the buckling load, if it had just been just a plate, is at about 13.1 KSI. And if you remember before, 17 KSI was the buckling load um, for uh, the plate where it was also restrained by those um, flanges. So that's an interaction between uh, those uh, two members. Okay, so um, this is just kind of the, the brief introduction I wanted to give you, um, not getting too far into it. Um, and you can see that you can play around with this quite a bit more. I'll create some additional um, uh, movies for you uh, at another time, um, but this just gives you a, a quick introduction to, to go a little bit further with CFSM than you have so far. And even if you wanted to, you could probably do enough now um, to finish the homework. All right, cheers.